Hello and welcome to the show. Uh, this is the first European Landscape Photographers Hangout. It was a great day for the European Landscape Photographers. It wasn't uh, a great day for me. My name is Olaf Bartke. I'm the host of the show and I'm also the guy that is missing on the show. The audio recording wasn't functioning very well. I don't know what went wrong. I've done this several times and uh, yeah, I haven't had any serious problem with my workflow. And uh, so after the show, all audio recording was missing. Luckily, a friend of mine uh, was able to repair the audio stream of uh, Hangout that was shown in my browser. Uh, but uh, yeah, all my personal audio recording, so everything I said, uh, was missing. So I cut out everything I said. And of course, this um, this causes some serious breaks, and it's uh, not it's not so great to watch the show. But I guess the talk is working without me. Should I be worried? No. It uh, it was a great experience to to meet all these great landscape photographers from all over Europe and. Uh, Everybody's promising me that uh, it should not be the last talk we've had. So maybe there's a chance uh, to meet us again. And uh, till that moment, I will say thank you uh, watching the show and see you have a nice time. Bye bye. Hello, everybody. I live in Austria in a small town south of, of Vienna. It's not actually not the, the best position. Uh, for a landscape photographer, but I do a lot of assignments too, so I have a lot of, of clients in, in Vienna. So this is a good a compromise between assignments and, and, and landscape work. Yeah, I, I love this town. It's very small and idyllic. And I leave regularly to the west where the mountains start and the Alps. Yeah, and I, I enjoy traveling by, by a camping van. And that's actually perfect, yeah. My webpage is called silent-moment.com and it's Facebook and you find me on Facebook under this silent-moment.com and on the web and on Google it's just my name and Google Plus, it's just Rainer Mira. Yeah, this, these are the three main main points in the, in the on, on, online. Hi, buonasera. I'm Frank. I'm Francesco. I'm uh, from Italy. You can uh, you can find me on the internet uh, in my website that is uh, francescogola.net. So my first name and my last name without uh, spaces. And uh, I'm both on uh, Twitter, Facebook, but uh, I'm most active on uh, Google Plus. Uh, that is, I think that is uh, great for uh, photography. I live in uh, North Italy, in the West Coast, uh, in a small town that is called Verici, and uh, I will show you later where uh, is it. Uh, I'm not a pro, uh, unfortunately, photography don't fit me, but uh, I really love photography. Hi, my name is uh, Dorin Bofan. I'm from Romania. Uh, I live in the center of Romania, in a region called Transylvania. I'm sure everybody's heard of Transylvania. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not so active on uh, on Google Plus. I'm more active on Facebook. Uh, my my network of uh, Romanian friends is there. Uh, my website is uh, dorimbofan.com, uh, spelled D-O-R-I-M-B-O-F-A-N. So that's my name. You can find a lot of uh, a lot about me there. A lot about uh, my. I have a blog which is mostly in Romanian, but I have some English posts. And I hope I can uh, post more often in English. And um, I love to travel. And that's about it. <laughs> it's inside the, um, the Carpathian Arc. Uh, the Carpathians uh, start somewhere around here and they go towards uh, Bulgaria and uh, the Balkans around here. And uh, I live. In, uh, inside the, the Carpathian uh, Arc, which is uh, basically 
it comprises the uh, the largest area of the Carpathians here in Romania. So it's quite nice for me because I can go in any direction, and it takes me uh, three hour stops to to reach the mountains. So that's that's pretty cool to live here, and. And uh, around my town there are a lot of uh, hills, so I can go photograph uh, forests. I like uh, I like trees and forests uh, quite a lot, and uh, the more intimate side of nature. And uh, I can show you the nature, the national park, which I'm uh, going to talk about a little bit and show you some images. So it's east from where I live quite close, very close actually, from the town in which I was born. I uh, began hiking this mountain about uh, 15 years ago, when I was a teenager, and I went almost every year since, so I, get, uh, I got to know the mountain quite well. As you can see, it has uh, a lake. It's an artificial lake, and one of the the main advantages of this lake is that uh, in the morning the possibility of fog is uh, is quite big. So you get fog around the mountain. So this is the mountain. You see it here, so you can get a lot of uh, fog. It's not very it's not very high, but it has um, quite a complex structure, and you can find a lot of interested, uh, interesting elements. I will show you some of them. There are uh, some rock formations that are quite unique in Europe, I would say. They resemble very much the Huangshan Mountains in uh, China, which I'm pretty sure. Huangshan in China. Yeah, they, they resemble uh, a lot uh, with those mountains. And I will know, see that yeah, <laughs> I, I will show you just in a second. So we can uh, go through the images a bit. Uh, this was taken um, in the last day of uh, 2011. This is a parhelic circle. It was quite nice to, to see it and to capture it like that with the, the trees. Yeah, this is, this is another shot of the same uh, parhelic circle. It's an amazing phenomenon, and it's quite uh, quite normal to see it in the mountains, especially during winter time. Yeah, this is a sunset. Um, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it was quite nice to to be just to be there, you know. Yeah, it looks great. And did you sleep on the top there? Yeah, uh, on the top uh, there is um, a lodge, and sometimes I stay at the lodge. Other times I uh, I sleep with my tent. Okay. Other times I uh, I just do I just sleep on the outside, just using the sleeping bag. So it's it's quite nice. That's perfect light. Yeah. <laughs> Want to have that every day. <laughs> So this is this is uh, the view from the lodge, uh, looking uh, towards the valley. So as, as you can see, there's fog. Fog is very frequent here due to the due to the lake. This is another view taken in winter time. But, uh, uh, this was actually made uh, in the first day of uh, 2012. So it was uh, it was a new year's year. Yeah. New Year's present. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, also fog in in the distance. Uh, I don't know. I I don't think anything is better than uh, what uh, Galen Rowell did. So <laughs> maybe he was the first one who did it. Yeah, yeah. This is a view um, during uh, summertime. Again, fog in the distance. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is actually uh, quite an interesting uh, viewpoint outside um, uh, outside the track. Uh, not uh, many people know about it. And uh, here, uh, down in the valley, there are those rock formations I was uh, telling you about, but I have some uh, close-up shots which I'm going to show you. Uh, one of the main uh, one of the main cool aspects about uh, Chahlo National Park is that uh, you can find a lot of larch. So of course, in uh, the autumn, uh, the the landscape is just transformed by uh, the the yellow of the larch, and that's quite nice to photograph. Mm. Again, fog. <laughs> Just a just a view taken at the sunrise. It was like minus twenty degrees. <laughs> it's amazing that the horizon is like uh, so straight in the mountains. Yeah. You don't yeah. have that usually. Looks because, straight. Uh, because uh, as you can uh, as you can probably saw before, you, uh, the Chahlo National Park doesn't have uh, big mountains surrounding it. Mm -hmm. that, so that could be, yeah, that could be an advantage, but also a disadvantage. Because I kind of wish that sometimes I I had like a big peak in the mm -hmm. background to work with, and I usually have to adapt with the straight line of sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> there you have enough enough peaks, I yeah. guess. Yeah, it's one of the the most. Uh, astonishing the landscapes I I have ever seen. Yeah, it's quite impressive. Uh, yeah, this is another view taken with a uh, uh, tele lens, uh, looking towards uh, the valley. It's something more like a Japanese stamp, like the Japanese drawings. So yeah, it's taken uh, at sunrise. Yeah. Another view taken in winter time. So my town is somewhere around here, quite close. My hometown. I don't live. Uh, I don't live now there. Taken at sunrise. Another view in uh, in winter time. Yeah. Again, fog present. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll do it, but you know, with with these these uh, uh, social networks, it's sometimes hard to keep up for me. So I chose Facebook because a lot of uh, Romanians, fellows, Romanian photographers are there. So it's uh, it's easy. Yeah, but it's just uh, five seconds of work. I mean, I post the same thing on on Google Plus, like on yeah, Facebook. Yeah. So yeah, you're right, right. Not a big off effort. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Far better. Uh, here in Romania, Facebook is uh, is a lot uh, popular than, uh, than Google Plus. Another view taken in winter time, black and white conversion. This is taken at the beginning of autumn. Uh, you see uh, part of the the lake. And this is all the same mountain range. Yeah. It's all yeah. This, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and the and the area is uh is quite small. I mean you you can uh, traverse the, the plateau in like two hours tops, you know. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's it's quite small. And uh, this and the fact that I traveled here, I I went here uh, every year. Uh, that allowed me to get to know the landscape very well, to understand mm -hmm. the weather and the weather patterns, and yeah, th this basically allowed me to do something evocative of the place. Mm -hmm. All right, another image taken um, at, uh, quite uh, the, at the end of the blue hour. We had the moon here, and what was uh, cool that the moon was uh, illuminating the clouds from above. Something I don't I don't see very often. I don't get uh, to photograph very often. The, the separation is uh, isn't that clear in uh, the foreground with the background, but I, I really liked the, the light and uh, the overall feel of the image, so I decided to keep it anyway. <laughs> Uh, this is a close-up of uh, some interesting phenomenon because uh, uh, the sun was rising and it was uh, blocking. Uh, there was a ridge 
behind, you can see it here, and it was blocking uh, some of the light. And uh, there was this ray illuminating this, uh, uh, this uh, fog. So as you can see behind, there was no uh, direct light. It was a uh, um, cool moment to witness and photograph something. Yeah, so. mystical. Cool. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite mystical, yeah. Um, uh, Chahlo National Park has a lot of legends and almost every rock, uh, every river has, uh, has a legend. Uh, our ancestors came here, it says, uh, the history says so, came here on the top of the mountain uh, to pray and uh, it has, uh, the, the mountain is surrounded by, uh, by a lot of uh, legends and it has a history that goes way, way back. Not necessarily vampires, we really don't believe in vampires here in Romania. <laughs> It's, it's just you a, have to, yeah, because it's just it's just a western uh, it's just a western uh, legend. <laughs> another another scene uh, featuring fog illuminated the sunrise. And uh, here are the rock formations I was telling you about that uh, quite resemble Huangshan Mountain in China. It's quite special, and as you can see, I will show you here. You can see it better. Uh, larch grows on top of them and at sunrise uh, is illuminated during autumn uh, quite nicely as you can see here. Uh, no, no it's not a hard hike but uh, this view this viewpoint is quite hidden and not not many people know about it. Uh, I, I try to keep it that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I do photo tours and I have actually two for photo tours uh, this year here in Chahlo National Park, one in October and one in November with a fellow photographer from Romania. Yeah, it's it's more for the for the uh, Romanian photographers who want to learn. But of course, if anybody um, from Europe or anywhere anywhere in the world is visiting Romania and wants to attend uh, one of my photo tours, you yeah, can can do it. It's no problem. Another, another view of the, the rock formations with some uh, fog. As you can see, it's uh, I, I'm not sure if you have or you have seen something similar in Europe, but because uh, I traveled in Italy and Switzerland, um, Norway, but I haven't seen something uh, similar. So it's I, I'd say it's quite unique for uh, our area around here. I'm not very sure, but uh, maybe if someone uh, somewhere else can can show us something similar, I would love to see, and of course I would love to photograph because I I really like formations like that. Now, how is that called? It's uh, in uh, Sächsisch Schweiz, uh, like between Prague and Dresden. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's called, but there are some there's some similarity, not that steep maybe but also very unique stone formations. I need to go there on my way to Norway sometime. Mm -hmm. I, I can send you an image. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'll stop now, I'll stop now, I'll let... Uh, Don't stop. <laughs> somebody else uh, show us uh, their images. It's my turn. Okay, so as I said before, I'm from Austria. I'll show you the map. Just a second. I was in the... Sexy Schwarz for Dorin. Okay, here we go. Uh, Olaf said before he thinks he's in the middle of Europe. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I I show you what is the middle of Europe. No, just just kidding. <laughs> so now I'm in select window. I'm just a newbie. So this is the middle of Europe. That's where I live. No, um, Austrian is always called the the heart of Europe. Oh, is that right? Maybe um, the location is not too perfect. I I think I would live would love to live far more east in uh, west in, in in the Alps, but yeah, that's what it is, and I do my best. Um, I, I'm, it's not that that I travel a lot in my home region, so. Actually, I do more uh, uh, travels for several weeks, and I, I travel whole Europe. So 
maybe I have more images from from Norway than from my home country. That's a bit strange, but yeah, there is not too much to photograph right uh, around where I live. Yeah, I I know that you really like Norway. Norway is I've been there I don't know nine or ten times. It's, it's yeah. almost every every year or so. I I did uh, a, a study there also a few months. I just I just love their culture and and this endless vast landscape and and not too many people. That's the main problem in in Central Europe. There are far too many people. So, Dorin, you you have uh, a great place for landscape photography, <laughs> I guess. I don't know how many people live in, in Romania. Ah, it's not very crowded. <laughs> it's not crowded. <laughs> huh? You you have real wilderness there, huh? And we don't yeah, have that yeah. in, in, in Austria. Yeah, that's the problem in Austria. The is quite pristine here in Romania, yeah. and a lot of wildlife, a lot of bears, a lot of wolves. Yeah, that's yeah. really really great. So that's the reason why I go I travel to Norway. Maybe I should go to Romania, but uh, I would travel alone and, and in the bus, and I, I don't know the region. It's, I have to, to, make, uh, to get to know it much more, I think. You know, yeah. a, guide. You know a guide now. Yes, I know a guide <laughs> yeah. now. That's right. <laughs> that's right. No, it's all new to me. I mean, Google Plus is maybe half a year, and, and Facebook, it's, it's two years ago I joined. So it's very great for me too to 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 get to know so many people all over the world. I mean, it's amazing. Google Plus is more professional. That's what I like. Yeah, it's better for photographers. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's less it's less chit chat. It's more about talking yeah. serious. Yeah, that's right. So let's have a look at some Austrian images. I mean, I I did not I did choose. Uh, the cliche image like this, and I also have chosen images uh, which uh, maybe surprises some somebody. Say that's Austria. I not No, I don't know. I made it a few weeks ago, so I, I can. I think it will sell very good uh, as a calendar image, for example. Because this is a really a cliche. You know, it's it's like the the cows and the, the green pasture and then the, and the hills and. Yeah, it's. I, mean, I, I like it. I have no problem with cliches as long as they are good. Yeah, I, I, I don't think cliche is a bad word. So, yeah, some people think too. it's a bad word. Yeah. I like the, I like cliche images. Yeah. But they they have to be really. They fulfill the cliche. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, it's Upper Austria, and it's I did it completely by chance. Um, like I missed the sun for like 15 minutes. I, I need to go there again. Because if the sun would uh, touch the the fog and 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 the tops of the of the of the mountains, it would be even better. Um, yeah, that's that's an Austrian image. Uh, maybe maybe in Switzerland you can do this, and there is no place in Europe where you can shoot something like this. I did, think. did you have any any corn rails in this shot? What do you mean? Sorry. Did you have any any corn rails in the shot from the aeroplanes? That, that's no. an issue that I always have in the morning when I I have a. A picture that is this that uh, that wide than, than this one. Yeah, sure. Not not in this case. And okay. if I have one or two small, I would I would yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, stamp it away. I mean, I, um, yeah, sure. This is not not something. On it's not the real world. I think or it's not a part of the landscape. Let's say. Like yeah, this. yeah, definitely. Okay, so the next image. Let me see. This is also. This is maybe a, a completely different image because you wouldn't uh, say that this is a typical Austrian image if you don't know Austria very well. This is the far, the far east. That's called a uh, Burgenland, where we have a uh, a huge national park. And this is the, the Neusiedler Lake, and there's a lot of birds. And it's maybe well known in all of Europe for for bird lovers, and it's great for sailing and so on. Uh, and of course, wine. Uh, I just cho have chosen this image to show you that, that Austria is not only uh, the alpine regions and, and something like that. So we have a lot of, of, of flat areas too in the Far East. Uh, on the other hand, many, this image is not a not not of one of my favorites, of course. It's almost an abstract. Yeah, it's maybe that the, the long lens yeah. makes it interesting, but, it's but nice. it's, yeah, the, the light is not that good. But it's okay. Thank you, Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's 
which is always interesting. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> This is a very famous, it's also a cliche image, it's also of course very good selling. I have no problem with good selling images because I want to live <laughs> from what I do. Um, that's called a Wachau, it's, it's like UNESCO World Heritage um, where the, the Danube uh, comes to sort of narrow, so the, the, the Danube goes through a, a small valley and yeah, this is this is also Austria. I mean, the whole world al almost knows this. Yeah, like uh, Japanese people come to see this, and Americans, and uh, it's quite nice. Uh, you can compare it uh, with the the Rheintal in in Germany. I've been there, and it's quite similar. We have the the wine uh, growing on the on the on the hills, and again, it's not it's not uh, uh, a favorite image of mine. But it shows Austria as it is and as you as you know it. Okay, next one. This is something much more special. I did that also a, f a few weeks ago. Nice. Um, on the first on the first first view, you may say that's like a Caribbean or like the sea, or mm -hmm. um, but it's a it's an alpine lake, very clear water. And shot very from a very steep uh, uh, rock. Um, yeah, I, it's I, I like the lack of scale here. So you're a bit confused how big it is, and yeah, it, that's, that's right. It's nice. It's nice. But it's, it can, it it has, a it's it like small, be. small birches on, yeah. on this island, yeah. and unfortunately, you have no chance to, to to get anywhere soon to the to the to the lake because it's all a swamp, and you have oh. absolutely no chance to get there. So you have to climb up and. Okay. That's just. Which lake is it? It's the Alm Lake. Ah, yeah. I, I looked at this one today. Yeah, you, you should. On the map, yeah. It's it's near Munden, right? It's like Munden, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Like thirty kilometers or so. Uh, and it's a typical uh, clear water alpine lake, so it's it's I really love it. And the mountains are what is it? Chalk, I think. Chalk. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rock. Yeah, so this is really clear water and, and, and good filtered water. Very nice. Okay, there are two more images. I don't know what comes. Yeah, this one I've chosen because I did it only also a few weeks ago. They are almost from one trip a few days to the west. Um, this is a completely unknown gorge. I mean, Andreas, I'm <laughs> sure, <laughs> will show us some gorge images. He's uh, the master of the gorges. Uh, I've never seen this. I've uh, never heard of about uh, this gorge, and I was just going by chance. It was raining, and I w it was evening, and I was, okay, let's give it a try. And I, I, I just stepped inside a few hundred meters, and... Uh, suddenly, all of a sudden, I was uh, like in this uh, green paradise. I was really overwhelmed because this is this is not typical. This is like uh, I don't know, like oh, Pacific forest. Pacific Northwest, yeah, or New Zealand, something like that. I mean, almost, yeah. But it's really you don't find that anywhere in, in Austria, and that's why this is maybe like a your surprise. But this is Austria, and that's why I chose this image. And, and, and I did a lot of images and. Sorry? The light is great here. Yeah, yeah. this is, I did that, I was there in the evening and there was a uh, backlit and that was a kind of a problem and I, I, I slept in my camping van and I, I visited this place again in the morning and then I had a uh, backlit and light rain and that was really perfect. So this is a completely by chance shot but yeah, I love it. This green, green hell. Um, yeah. So, what else? One last image do I have? Yes, this is this is also Austria. This is high alpine region. This is uh, more than 3,000 meters high. And I really enjoy to do it maybe once or twice a year. Uh, when I was young or in my youth, we did it really a lot. Several days with a tent and sleeping up there. Uh, like it's kind of adventurous and these are the only possibilities in Austria to be on your own because everywhere are people 
but uh, in the higher alpine regions, you you can be on your own, and that's I do, do enjoy this uh, quite a lot. Even sleeping in the tent and uh, yeah, having some kind of adventure. And the funny thing on this image is, you don't see it on the first uh, view. Maybe there is no reflection. So people ask me, uh, who is this a fake? Is this a fake? Or how did you the sky? No, it's not icy. It was a relatively strong wind. It was su such a strong wind that they have absolutely no reflection. No, not HDR. I mean, it's I. Of course, I, I worked on the on the horizon with uh, some dodging and burning and so. But HDR is nothing I really do. No, I want to do it on my own with my fingers and my eyes. <laughs> Not with the software. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, a touch screen, of course. On the on the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. That's the, these are the images I was pre have prepared. Okay. <laughs> Zero points for Austria. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We deserve uh, it. I'll start uh, with showing you where I live. Just one second. Okay. You can see? Yeah. So, okay. I live in Lerici, that is a, a small town uh, in the north of Italy, in the west coast. And uh, I think I'm really lucky because uh, I love landscape and I love seascapes. And uh, the best moment, obviously, are in the morning and uh, at the sunset. And uh, as I'm a lazy person, <laughs> I like staying in bed. <laughs> no, I, I like staying in bed at morning. So this uh, area yeah. is really good for sunset shots. It, it gets and worse with the age, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but this area is called uh, the Gulf of Poets. Because uh, in this area, uh, poets like uh, Byron, Shelley, used to come to write uh, the, their poems and uh, to swim also. And uh, in this area we have uh, the Cinque Terre, that is a quite uh, no touristic location. But uh, this evening I'll show you, uh, as uh, five, ter five Land uh, Cinque Terre is uh, a, a really no place uh, in Italy, I'll try to show you something different, uh, that is this area. It is uh, the Gulf of Poets. So uh, I start showing you uh, Porto Venere, that is a uh, this small town that is at the edge from uh, Cinque Terre and the Gulf of Poets. And I show you a picture. Just one second. I try to to find. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, you can see? Yeah. Okay, okay this place is uh, called Byron Cave because it's a, a small place uh, where uh, Byron, Lord Byron, used to, to go to swim. And uh, this picture is, uh, I love long exposure, as you <coughs> probably know, and uh, as you'll see in this uh, hangout. And uh, I use uh, always uh, wide-angle lenses uh, with uh, leaf filters and uh, leaf <laughs> filters, polarizer. And uh, this shot uh, was taken uh, in the late summer, I think, in a, in a really stormy day. But uh, the, the water was, uh, the sea was so calm, and so I used uh, also a polarizer to, to reveal the, the azure tone of the water. And uh, the best period to take shot in this area is uh, on spring and uh, on, uh, on autumn, because uh, there are, for two reasons. The first is uh, that uh, there are no tourists, and uh, the second is uh, because the, the sun usually sunset uh, here in front uh, of the gulf and not behind the, the mountains. The second shot is this one, and uh, it was a lucky shot because uh, I didn't expect to take any photograph on that evening because there were no clouds at all, but uh, after the sunset uh, we, I saw 
it was a wonderful uh, ray of light, and uh, it was the first time uh, in my life, yeah. and so I tried I, I think to. They're called crepuscular rays. Yes, oh. yes. Okay. It's correct, but I never see, I never saw before uh, in this uh, in this area. So I was really lucky. How long? Uh, how long did they last? How long did this moment last? Oh, uh, uh, not more than five minutes. Okay. Uh, I think less. I was really lucky because uh, I had my camera with me and uh, the tripod uh, already in position. And uh, as you can see, the, the the sea was not so low. And uh, in uh, in Italy, in the, in the Mediterranean Sea, we have uh, the the lucky that uh, there are no high tides. So. Every moment, uh, every every evening, you can take a good sunset, and uh, you don't, uh, you just uh, don't uh, have to care about uh, tides. Uh, this one, okay. This I I choose this shot. Uh, this shot was taken also in the in the late autumn in a place that is called uh, a Blue Bay. Uh, I choose the, this photo because uh, uh, the the day after I I hear that, that uh, this place is called also the the death bay because uh, when uh, there is a dead body in the water the the currents uh, bring him uh, to this place. But uh, I think that uh, I found uh, a lucky evening for a, a good shot. Oh, it's really oh, that bad. Where, where exactly? Let me write it down. <laughs> I know your pain because uh, two, la two weeks ago I lost uh, all my uh, all my filters, uh, all my lease system filter in the water. It's this one, and uh, it was taken uh, not uh, really in the in the Gulf area, but uh, near uh, Viareggio, that uh, maybe you know where it is. And uh, it was a wonderful sunset uh, because the the sun was a sunset. Uh, the sunset was uh, near the island uh, that is called the Palmaria, and it happens uh, in this position, obviously only a few times uh, in the years. The next shot is uh, this one. And uh, during summer, we don't have uh, many many clouds and many storms, but uh, when uh, they come, uh, they create uh, a wonderful uh, wonderful situation, wonderful uh, wonderful light. And uh, the shot was taken in uh, a small town near Lerici that is called Tellaro. And uh, during summer, it's uh, really crowded uh, by people uh, that come here to swim, but with this weather. There, uh, I found only photographers. The Gulf of Poets is uh, not so deep, so near the coast uh, is uh, is uh, not deep, and uh, you can see the green because uh, uh, the the light uh, comes up from uh, the bottom of the sea. The next one is uh, taken in the, my favorite beach, where uh, I used to go swim. And it uh, was uh, another lucky day because uh, I had the bad weather and uh, <laughs> no <laughs> tourists, uh, no, no anyone on the beach. Uh, and so it was really a great uh, situation. Uh, here I used this is a long exposure of about uh, 30 seconds, I think. And uh, I used uh, use the um, Andy filter, three stop down. And uh, a graduated uh, and the filter with the soft edge. This uh, was uh, another lucky shot because uh, I I was in uh, in Lerici and uh, I uh, I didn't plan any shot uh, session, but uh, I watched uh, I watched the the weather and uh, there were those uh, wonderful clouds, and so I I looked for. Um, a good spot uh, where uh, where I know that uh, the sun uh, is uh, in front of me, and uh, this uh, the sunbeams in the water were uh, wonderful. 
and uh, to take this shot I I think I shot uh, around uh, 50, 50 shots to find the, the perfect uh, waves on the rocks. But, uh, and I got completely wet after this shot, but uh, I didn't lost my camera, fortunately. <laughs> then, uh, okay, this shot uh, was taken in the, the same location of the, the one of the first that, that I show you, that is this yeah. one. Okay, is uh, quite the same place, but uh, in a different situation. There were uh, uh, quite uh, raw sea, and uh, that's the reason because the water looks like uh, uh, a milk uh, or, or a fog. This is uh, a four minute shot, a uh, long exposure, and I used uh, the, uh, the big stopper that fortunately I didn't lost uh, with the other filters in the water. Yes, I, I ate this filter because I waited uh, six months before uh, getting. Yes. Yes, it's my favorite, I think, now. And I show you my last shot. Uh, taken, uh, this is the only shot that I took in Lerici, Lerici town, in a, in a place that is called Belvedere, that is a, <laughs> just a place when uh, you go with the girlfriend to see the sunset. <laughs> and that is as a three minute uh, long exposure. And uh, the water was uh, really calm, uh, no waves, no boats, and uh, so the, the clouds uh, passing through the mountains uh, were wonderful and uh, perfect with uh, the, the big stopper. So I think that uh, it's, that's all for me. Yeah. Excellent. Great, great shot. And, uh, yeah. I like the fact that the, the landscape and uh, your shots are minimal, very simple. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't like to, to put uh, people, uh, enter people nor uh, buildings in, uh, in my shot because uh, I think I live in a, one, I live in a wonderful location but uh, it's uh, really crowded by buildings and uh, crowded by people. So when I go out uh, with my camera I try to find uh, lonely places and uh, take shots of uh, lonely views. So that's the reason. Thank you. My, my website is www.andreasresch.at uh, I use Google Plus like you do, of course. We are here now. <laughs> and uh, Facebook a little less now, but I use it too because I have more friends there. Friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the gallery is not that good on Facebook, so I, I like Google+. Plus. I like what they do for photography and, and for the presentation. So I'm mostly there and, and on, some, on some forums occasionally, but mainly Google+. Plus now. I, I try to switch over to Google+. Plus. Uh, yeah, I'm from Austria, like, like Rainer. The only difference is, is I live a little more to the south, to the, to the, to the country of, Slo of Slovenia. I'm down there. Uh, let me let me switch my screen on. I hope this works. Do you see the map now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm down here, where the B is, and up here where the A is. That's that's where Rainer lives. So you so you see we are both on the on the east side of Austria. Damn. <laughs> yeah, which is not the most <laughs> mountainous area. <laughs> As you can see, it gets nice nicely gray here. That's where we always have to drive if we want to go to the mountains. But it's not too bad. It's like two hours or three hours for me, so that's okay. You, have, you always have to plan for, for more days, so it makes sense to, to, to spend the gasoline and time. All right, uh, let me show you some pictures. I've only prepared a few because you only said three pictures. <laughs> I, I don't I don't have that much, but uh, to, due to your hard disk problems, it's not too bad if I only have a few ones, <laughs> because it's maybe it's maybe smoking already. So, all right, let me try it again. Is it, is it hot? Oh yeah, this. You can tell us about your amazing genius sharpening script. 
This should be interesting oh, yeah. for all of us. <laughs> yeah. I guess Reina uses it. I, I know m maybe Dorin uses it as well. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's really Everybody great. Everybody's using it. Yeah. I'm telling. Yeah. Well, go Good ahead. Mistake. Go ahead. It's it's free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we all have crappy lenses. That's why I need a script. <laughs> No, it's, I, I can it, tell you, Andreas, your uh, sharpening script is uh, very popular around the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's free. I, I'm, I'm rich now. That's the great thing. I have three houses, five cars. That's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's just a little. Yeah, well, I uh, you know, I, I I give it away for free, and there's a, a PayPal link included in the README file, so. If people feel free to give me some money, it's okay. If not, I'm happy to help them out. Let me say, <laughs> if you have 20 seconds, have Andreas, yes, sure. you don't have to be so fast. No, I just want to say I need to, to share this screen because we talked about the these special mountains with Dorin before, okay. and it's too bad that uh, Michael Breitung is not with us because I found on his page... Uh, they are called uh, Schrammsteine. Uh, yeah, that's that's what the uh, Robin shot reminded me of. Yeah. Yeah, and this is really. I mean, I need to go there. I love these uh, special yeah, formations. Looks great. Sorry. Looks great. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, this is just one one angle. I don't know. There are many more views. Yeah. I did find more, but it's funny that Dorin uh, uh, photographs some rocks uh, in Romania similar to to Michael Breitungs in in, in Germany. So. Europe is all the same all over, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Denmark, no? We don't, we don't have the Euro. Ah, uh, Denmark, no. And in, and in Switzerland. <laughs> and in Romania, too. We don't have the Euro here. Yeah, so. not yet. But be happy you don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. going yeah. down anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I hope you see it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a typical mountain scene uh, in, from from the center central central center of Austria, where the, yeah it's a winter shot, the the camp the sharp yeah I I have I have a, I have a great script yeah, <laughs> uh, and this is large format as well so this is shot with my large format camera, nice. so this uh, that's why it's extra sharp because it has. High resolution and a good script on top of it. So in the middle there, that's the highest peak of Styria, the Dachstein. And yeah, this day I was lucky with the with the fog and the light. I've I've been up there several times, but uh, never had never got some really good shots. I never got any good clouds, so this was as as good as I got the image. But I was happy. It was dust. It was very cold. I was shaking all the time. It looks cold, yeah. Yeah. And if you're there waiting for the light and standing and not moving, it, it's really freezing. So here's another one. Yeah, that, that reminds me of our trip to, to Matu. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, minus, minus 12 degrees, fog, yeah. snow. In the tent. I, 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 way, was, no? I, I was lucky that you was up there with me because I wouldn't have survived for five days without you. So you slept in one sleeping bag. Of yeah, sure, that. sure. That's, <laughs> yeah, you, you you cannot carry all the stuff. Yeah, that's that's how we sh that's how we do photography in Austria. <laughs> okay. uh, all right, here's a, another shot from. That's from an amazing shot. Yeah. yeah right. Reminded me a little bit of yours, Dorin. You had one in your selection with the same colors. Blue mountains yeah, the, and the Chinese, yellow sky. The Japanese painting. They were actually really almost black because this was on the edge of a immense, intense rain, and I was uh, ten minutes later. I was completely wet, and I hiked down to the valley for three hours in complete rain, and <laughs> it was crazy. It was but well worth it. Yeah, yeah. I was happy that I got the shot. This yeah. was a good compensation. This is Styria as well, where I live. Uh, it's in the in a region called Gesäuse, which is a wonderful area where there's ancient forests and uh, nice rolling hills like here. It's a nice place. Uh, as Rainer mentioned, I'm a, a gorge photographer. I'm in gorges all the time. 
it's sort of a little project of mine. It keeps me keeps me busy. And this is one in, in Carinthia. My favorite gorge actually called Garnitzenklamm. And uh, like we saw in, in Rainer's image of the Almsee, the waters are crazy sometimes in the mountain regions. They are like blue, turquoise. Uh, you won't believe that, that this is Austria. Yeah, it's also chalk, chalk stone. Well, the Garnitzenklamm actually has so many rock uh, yeah. formations and rock characteristica. It's granite, it's marble. The, 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 the Karawaken, is it all? Is it, uh, is the whole mountain range is also mostly chalk stone. Uh, yeah, so most of it, yeah. Where yeah. the water gets yeah. really intense. Yeah. And it seems like a great place for abstracts. You know I like them, like you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of abstracts, here is one. This is another gorge in Salzburg. Uh, amazing. This was a crazy shot because I had to lay on the on the bridge for two minutes. This is a two minute exposure. Uh, this place is actually pretty dark. It's it's way darker than you see here, uh, and that's one of the uh, the good things about digital photography that the sensor you can really push the sensor to to a point where you don't see it with your eye, but it 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 it, it soaks out all the colors. It's so that's so great. That's why sometimes I like to shoot before sunset when you think nothing's happening. But if you expose for five minutes, the, the sky is like purple. Yeah, that's you, right, huh? Yeah, you really didn't see it. And so I, I gave it, I, I took the risk and, and, and <laughs> tried it for two minutes and that's what came out and I was really surprised. This is my 5D Mark II. Do you see? Oh, you see it already. Sorry. Now we see you. Yeah, that's, that was my fault. There you go. There it is. So that's another gorge. This one is actually like 30 minutes from where I live. This is the closest, the closest gorge that I have. That's why I've been there so many times now. It's the, it's, it's near Graz. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, that's not not not, not landscape. It's not a gorge. That's not a gorge. No, that's a gorgeous marmot. <laughs> uh, well, this is uh, this is in Slovenia already. I have to include Slovenia because. For me, it's sometimes shorter to go to Slovenia than to Austria because I live that far south, and they have the Alps there too. That's that's a typical uh, area where I was born. That's the complete south of Austria, on a crazy day with crazy clouds. That's, that's not good. That's one the Dorin knows. <laughs> Let me skip through there. Yeah, sometimes I do stuff like this. Go into little more details. I guess that's that's about it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Olaf. Thank you. Good Bye. night. Bye.